Thank you everyone that submitted your questions for this week's Q&A. Some of you got them answered in part one. Some of you are about to get them answered here in part number two. If you want questions answered in future Q&A videos, make sure you go to Twitter, follow the show, and ask your questions there. And while you're at it, if you haven't done so before, smash that subscribe button. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and see if I can get through most of the rest of these questions now. At WES, it's WESWE122, favorite type of wrestler, like technical, powerhouses, brawlers. Uh, I'm sure some will sit there, especially those that have watched me over the years and don't like me over the years, are going to talk about, he's a muscle mark, he likes the big guys, which is lacking in context and really kind of lazy and ignorant. Um... I'm a, I'm a mark for characters and stories just because historically, traditionally, most of the great characters and stories well, of the larger variety, I can't help that. But I'm a geek, a mark, absolute fucking raging mark for characters and stories. Like one of my favorite wrestlers from watching his actual work standpoint was Mick Foley. Wasn't a technical guy, certainly wasn't a powerhouse, certainly wasn't somebody you would classify as a muscle head or a roid head or anything like that, but he was a guy that could go through and really craft and piece together a story and be a character and do it being different characters, and I really appreciate that, and I really gravitate towards that. Like I like those ones traditionally that can be characters, that can be stories, those that can be different. Some cases that can be technical wrestlers, in some cases that can be brawlers, in some cases that could be powerhouses. So I don't know that I would put it necessarily in one specific bucket, although some certainly will sit there in the comments that I do. At Fork34, what are your thoughts on Jim Ross calling Randy Orton the best wrestler in the world? He's entitled to his take. If the AEW cats didn't like it, they could A, stop being bitches about it, B, not worry about what the fuck Jim Ross says, or C, try to figure out why he said that and work to prove him wrong. Instead, of course, they just, wah, 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 it's Kenny Omega, wah, 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 I'm a bunch of bitches. At Stefan, 1679-2174, since the world is more online, I wonder, why WWE hasn't used Cyber Sunday as a pay-per-view? What do you think, good or bad? Agree. Like, why the fuck not? You need to drive some engagement with your audience, why the fuck didn't, wouldn't you bring that back? I, I don't disagree. At Daniel Skin, Sims, underscore 23, how come Kenny Omega gets heat for wrestling a blow-up doll and the 90-year-old girl, but Kota Ibushi wrestled a blow-up doll also but gets no heat? Um, you know, I, again, admittedly, I don't keep track of a ton of Japan shit because a lot of that shit doesn't really appeal to me, so I try to stay away from it. Um, I think Kenny Omega gets it because... You know, you'll, you'll see the fans like will try to say that Ibushi's a great wrestler, blah, blah, blah. But they don't go to the lengths that they do with Kenny Omega. Like people talk about him being the best wrestler in the world or one of the all-time greats. You got Meltzer sitting there and great in every one of his matches with fucking Okada as six-plus stars. So it's different. That context, uh, Mr. Sims, matters and matters quite a bit. So that's why Kenny Omega gets heat also because he's from North America. So, you know, it's different than Ibushi, who largely stays over in Japan. It's just different. And the other reason he gets fucking heat for that is because he fucking deserves it. Like, maybe that shit works over there or whatever, but it's fucking stupid. At Project Avant, who should be the one to defeat Kenny Omega for the AEW world title? Hangman Adam Page, Darby Allin, or someone else? I don't give a shit who it is. Just get the fucking strap off him because he's a shitty world champion. At Liam Patrick, 1993, should Cena go full heel Sergeant Slaughter Iraqi sympathizer against the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns at SummerSlam? And Cena should absolutely come in and be like a fucking Hollywood dude. That's for sure. He already dyed his hair and all his other bullshit. He should not come back as hustle, loyalty, and respect Cena. That's fucking stupid. It's not needed, it's not wanted, and it will be detrimental. Uh, at King James 097, if you had the chance to interview John Cena or Randy Orton, who do you pick? That is a freaking outstanding question, Jimmy. That gets a foul. Interview John Cena or Randy Orton. Probably Cena because I would take him to task 
So like if I was allowed to ask him anything, I'd take him to task for all the motivational shit he tries to post yet sit there and he fucking undercut so many people during his decade of doom and destruction in WWE. Um, that's what I would do. Uh, Kyle Garner 92, forgive my memory, but what was the issue you had with Cody Rhodes a few years ago on Twitter? Was that exchange of maybe reason why you don't like him or is there more? Uh, the whole thing started a couple of years ago because uh, somebody, I think it was Julius Wright, I can't remember who it was on Twitter. If I'm getting the names wrong, I apologize, but that was back in like 2018 now, so three years ago. Um, but like there was a Cody Rhodes tweet or somebody had tweeted something that Cody Rhodes had said. And then I respond because it was called out to me and I responded back like um, I said something positive about Cody and then something to the effect that he was kind of full of shit. Like he was playing a good political game, which to be clear, he was. He absolutely was. And Cody, you know, did what wrestlers do today. Acted like a punk bitch. I mean, real talk. Like he could not handle that for whatever fucking reason. Like, you're sitting there talking about, it was even something to the effect of that, oh, excuse me, it was something to the effect of, I called him out because he was saying WWE doesn't hold people back, and you know that's bullshit. We all know that's fucking bullshit. Like, everybody, as that thing kind of went on in 2018, like, nobody was fucking agreeing with him. Meltzer... Like, people you would expect to agree with him. Wrestlers that were doing podcasts, wrestlers on social media, fucking Meltzer and all the other dirt sheet guys. Like, YouTubers, like, the only people that didn't agree with me were the ones that were clout chasing because they see Cody and his larger, significantly larger platform and assume he must automatically be correct. But it was a dumb fucking statement. And I didn't come at him originally negatively. I really didn't. He was the one that flew off the handle. And then there was a lot of back and forth. Um, he's a liar. He lied about things that I said. He lies. That's what he fucking does. He really does. He's a narcissist, like, and not in a good way. Um, but it's cool, like, whatever. But make no mistake about it. The whole thing really started because he didn't like that I called out the bullshit about saying WWE doesn't hold anybody back. And that is just complete bullshit. Everybody fucking knows that's bullshit for him to say that. I mean, it is. Like, not even disputable. So that's kind of what it was, Kyle. Kyle, and that's how stupid it is. At McCullough underscore Derek, why does it seem Jade Cardgill is in a hold pattern? She has the potential to be a superstar, but she's barely on TV. Because the guys running AEW don't know what the fuck they're doing. That's why. That's why. Listen, some of y'all that are raging AEW marks, like you've got to be able to be comfortable with the fact that your company so far has done all right for themselves, and they've got a shit ton that they can get better and improve upon. And what they've done for the most part with that women's division has sucked. And yeah, to your point, like, you don't want to overexpose Jade too much because she's still inexperienced. She's still raw in a lot of ways. Still green as goose shit in some places. But, you know, like, you put her in that spotlight, aligned her with Shaq for a fucking reason. You should be more prominently featuring her. But again, they're not because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, at Mr. Jinx05, will Dino Bravo's murder ever be solved? I think the host... The hopes of that happening were buried, R.I.P., a long time ago. Why? Because he's dead. <laughs> it's a cold case, as cold as his skeleton is resting in the Canadian ground. <laughs> Junior from Tonga Fanboy, I see you follow OSW Review. Can you tell us who is in your boy's stable? I have no fucking clue what you're talking about, honestly. It's not like I watch their videos. I mean, I don't like them or anything. I just really don't watch them. It's just, that's a matter of me, like, following those that have bigger audiences, bigger followings, and trying to learn and pick up things. But it doesn't mean that I fucking watch their product or really interact with them a ton. No, I don't. At Biggest underscore Hedis, how would you have felt had Roman been built to a level where he could realistically broke the streak at WrestleMania, then came out the next day and asked for acknowledgement, and then started the Tribal Chief as then? That's what the fuck should have happened. It would work so much better if he did. Just saying. 
Um, at J underscore Droughty underscore zero three, how good was Mad Dog Vashon? Watching some older stuff, and he's very intriguing, to say the least. Uh, for a lot of modern fans, they would think he sucked because he couldn't flip or kick. Um, but Mad Dog was a character. Like, you look at a guy like Mad Dog Vashon in his time, and he looks like what a professional wrestler used to supposed to fucking look like. That's what it is. Um, but he was a character, he was a personality, and he was believable because he was crazy as shit. At Demarcus Flowers said, Dave Meltzer recently said in his podcast that Roman Reigns and Kenny Omega are essentially the same character. Has Dave Meltzer gone full Dave Meltzer even for Dave Meltzer? That's just fucking idiotic. Like, it's really fucking idiotic. And again, I implore of all of you, if you are in a place in 2021 that even though you're probably seeking, as most people do, confirmation bias of, well, I like it, so I want to make sure others like it, so I way I can feel good about liking it, like that fucking matters at all. If you still go to Dave Meltzer and think his wrestling opinions are relevant, matter, or something good that we should listen to, you've got a problem and you need to stop. Because that is some dumb shit right there, even for him. And boy, over the last few years, he's, he said a whole hell of a lot of dumb shit. The hero of Kavach. Who would win in a foot race? The Shockmaster, Sin Cara, or Titus O'Neil? <laughs> Titus O'Neil. He can cover more ground, tall dude, long legs. And even when he falls forward, like he's going to cover some distance there. <laughs> so I think it's him. At Volfan0531, which match excites you more? The Tribal Chief versus The Rock or John Cena versus Randy Orton for a 17th world title? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo, shit! Woo! The Tribal Chief versus The Rock is something. That's got family lineage. That is WrestleMania main event worthy shit. But for me? Cena versus Orton? For a world title, one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania, excites me way more. It would give me so much material in the build-up to it. I could revive the Breakfast Club shit one more time. Hell yeah, it's fucking that match. Are you kidding me? I've been begging for that one for years. <laughs> at George, 1847-7530. Why doesn't WWE push Jeff Hardy? For casuals, he's their favorite wrestler. I don't fucking know. It's like they side these guys. They like the idea of signing these guys and then they lose interest in them quickly and don't know what the fuck to do with them anymore. Um, yeah, they should absolutely be featuring Jeff Hardy in a prominent spot and not just having them always put people over either. I, mean, I don't fucking get it. I don't get it either. Um, Chrysler Official. Do you like redundant documentaries? I mean, you see one about a specific situation that's amazing and you are satisfied. Why then companies will make a second one that looks fake and staged? Why would anyone want to watch Space Jam 2 if the original documentary was perfect? Thank you! Fuck Space Jam 2. Fuck la bitch James. Fuck any of you that are going to watch that abortion of a bullshit. The Mox Guy. Does Roman Reigns carry wrestling at the moment? Not 100%, but a lot of my interest in it for me. I'll say that. Shit. Which would these would you do if your life depended on it? Accept financial advice from the slap nuts or go back in time and prevent Johnny Ace from telling Sid to jump off the middle rope in over, order to expand his offensive repertoire? Now, a lot of you might say, Jeff, this is really a chance for you to be a good person and you know possibly extend Sid's career and not have him end up with the fucking fractured leg and everything, but I'm not going to do that. I could take financial advice from the slap nuts because I don't have to heat it. I don't have to do anything with it. You're not going to take that other memory away from me. So fuck that. I'm just saying. Joseph Moran, is it sad that my 118 pound ass could be more comfortable with my body than at least 85% of WWE's roster? Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, what, what do you want me to say, sir? What do you want me to say? I don't know. I don't think it matters. Alex, why are people keep separating WWE and NXT when someone critiques modern WWE as if they are two different companies? 
yeah, they're two different like brands within the same company. So, or, you know, like NXT is part of that umbrella, I should say. I thought you said Raw at first. I apologize. Um, yeah, it's all part of the same shit. <laughs> so, they just think of it like as a different brand just to try and differentiate so that way somebody can say, I'm not really watching WWE, but you totally fucking are. Um, Son Goshuaku, since 2002, WrestleManias that have had eight in the number have featured The Rock in a past face versus current face match. Would you agree this reason would make it more poetic if the schedules allow for Rock versus Roman at 38 in Dallas instead of 39 in LA? Yeah. I like your way of thinking here. I like your way of thinking. How weak, oh, wrestling rants. How weak is NXT's main event scene and anyone on that roster you put up there to improve it? Their main event scene is in, incredibly weak. I just watched that takeover in your house bullshit. Like you had Karrion Cross, and then you got guys like Kyle O'Reilly and Johnny Lane face and fucking the loser weight in a main event. Like, oh God, it's fucking terrible. Splash Bro Kieran, why didn't Savage become as big of a deal as Hogan or a warrior? He was better in the ring, on the mic, and had a marketable looking voice. Example being his Slim Jim commercials. Let, let's clarify something here, Kieran. And we're going to defer to my life experience and my logic because you're not old enough to really fucking know better. And that's just the reality. Like, sorry. Um, but Savage was a bigger deal than Warrior. So I take exception to you saying that it wasn't true. That absolutely was fucking true. Yeah, Warrior was a big star, household name. And Hogan was on a whole different plane. But Savage was somewhere in between the two of them, I promise you. And he was a lot closer to Hogan than he was to fucking Warrior. Yeah, yeah. Savage was not a lesser deal than Warrior. Don't be insane. Um, Andreas Bryan, I'm looking forward to your King of the Ro Ring 98 review with the famous Hell in a Cell match. Did you watch that pay-per-view live? What was your re initial reaction to Foley falling off the cage? This is the most important match of the Attitude Era. I think it might be the most important match of the Attitude Era. From a standpoint of, you know, people still watching like ECW and shit. Now you could go to WWF and you could get that same type of extreme crap. And then you talk about the superior production values and everything else. Like these were the things that were helping him stand out. These were the things that helped him take notice. I did not watch it live. Um, but it's arguably the most important match of the Attitude Era. That's for sure. Um, let's see here. Center 51190, in my book, every promotion should have at least three at most six individuals that you can plug into a world title picture and have it come off well. Both AEW and WWE haven't done a good enough job doing so in my book. Who isn't at that level but should be? I like your thought process here. Like, you should have some type of established, like, top players, and then you could rotate them kind of in and out. Um... I, I can't imagine the thought process that goes behind... We're not going to put the world title on MGF or MJF. We're going to put the title on fucking Kenny Omega. Like, that's just massively dumb. Massively dumb. So MJF certainly is a guy that should be there that's not. And you're going to say, well, he is. He didn't even want a fucking world title with the company. So no, he fucking isn't. Um, who else? Who else? I'd probably Hangman Page at this point. He would be another one. You know, eventually when they get out of this foolishness, maybe Wardlow will be one of those guys. Powerhouse Hobbs or, or Brian Cage. Maybe it's Brian Cage because you could have a little more faith in him having been a previous world champion somewhere else. Like Those are guys that I look at that they're stuck in factions because AEW has got too much talent there. And not just talent in terms of actual talent, just talent in terms of the sheer numbers of wrestlers they have on their contract. And some of those guys get lost in the schmas. Um... MC17 Clark, if Jamal and Rosie were still alive today, how do you think they'd also be members of Ro Roman Samoan faction? Um, that would have been very interesting. I'm sure they fucking would have fallen right in line with the head of the table and acknowledged the tribal chief because they know it would have been the best thing for family business. All right, well, I think that's enough. I've gotten through pretty much all the questions that I want to answer here. Got through a good number of them. Thank you, everybody, again for submitting your questions. King of the Ring 98 review will be up on Monday, so make sure you check that out. 
Follow the show on Twitter. Smash that subscribe button. I'm out.